In this video, we're going to talk about characteristics of a triangle, specifically the centers, uh, in which case we'll be focusing on the median, the angle bisector, the perpendicular bisector, and the altitude. Uh, so let's get started. We'll start with the median. Uh, the way you draw it is it's simply a line segment that extends from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if you're going to draw it, you simply start at a vertex and you angle, aim it for the midpoint of the opposite side, and I don't have a compass to, or a ruler, but we will simply estimate it. And vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, and of course we could label it, these sides are congruent. And then uh, for every triangle there are three medians, um, so sometimes what I like to do is turn the paper over, and so I get a little bit of better drawing. And then the midpoint, well again we'll draw from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, right there, and these two are congruent. And then finally, we will do the third vertex to and its median. And what you'll find is that it will intersect, all three of them will intersect somewhere inside the triangle. And this is called the point of concurrency. Uh, a couple cool things about the median. Uh, if you notice, when you take a median, you're actually cutting the area exactly in half. If you were to re-examine this, if you had a triangle, and of course the area of a triangle is one half base times height, when we draw our median like this, notice that the height remains the same, and then the bases are the same. Since they were bisected, we have a base and a base height, so therefore these two areas would be identical. Another cool thing about the median is the point of concurrency is called the centroid, and the centroid if you were actually theoretically, if this thing was made of concrete and you were to balance it on the centroid, the thing would balance evenly because these three parts are congruent in area. Um, also what's kind of cool is the measurement from this side to the centroid, the center, is one third of the way to the vertex and it is the same for all these segments. So for example, if this segment were three, that would mean this segment would have to be 6 because this is one third of the way and the whole thing is 9 and notice this is double that. So that's a couple cool things about the median uh, and we'll go on to the next one. Now we'll take a look at the altitude of a triangle, which uh, is also very similar to the height when you're measuring the area of a triangle, one half base times height. Uh, and an altitude is simply a line drawn from the vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. So similar to the median, what you'll do is you start at each vertex, we'll start a vertex here, and just simply drop a line perpendicular to the opposite side. There, that's a right angle. And of course, we do the same for the other two vertices. right angle. And then the third one, as you probably can guess, is going to cross right through where those two intersected. And right angle. And of course they meet at somewhere, for an acute triangle, they meet somewhere inside the triangle. And this center is called the orthocenter. Now, when you have a right triangle, it gets a little bit trickier to draw. And what I'm going to show you is they have a common property, and it's this. If we start here, at where the 90 degree angle is. Again, we we'll draw an altitude to the opposite side, perpendicular, no problem. This is perpendicular. Now, at this corner, where the hypotenuse and the leg meet, if you were to draw a perpendicular line to the opposite side, what you'll discover is it's simply one of the sides of the triangle, perpendicular. And if you were to do the same with the other side, perpendicular, what you find is that the orthocenter is simply the corner of the right triangle. Then for the third one, we have the obtuse triangle. And again, it's a little trickier to draw. You'll start at the vertex, and let's start actually at the obtuse angle. Pretty simple here. You just simply draw a right angle through the opposite side. And then when you go to the second vertex, what you discover is there's no real way to draw from here directly to the given side and create a right angle. It's, it's diagonal, it's crooked. So what you need to do is take your 
straight edge and extend this side with a dotted line. And then now what you can do is you can actually draw a perpendicular line from this vertex through the opposite side through this dotted line. Okay, And this is a right angle. And of course we'll do the same thing with the other side. Again we have a vertex. There's really no way to draw it directly to the triangle. So what we do is we create a, an extended imaginary line. Then we draw a perpendicular line through that dashed line. And what you discover is the orthocenter is outside the obtuse triangle. Now an angle bisector is just what it sounds like you take each angle of the triangle and we're going to bisect it. So how do you draw it? Again, you start at a vertex and ignoring the other side, you simply bisect the angle. So this would be here and of course it would work a lot better if we had a compass or actually a protractor, which I do have, and we'd bisect that way. Nevertheless, we have two congruent angles. And then of course we go to the second vertex and we will bisect this angle. Again, I'm approximating for this example. And these two angles are congruent. And then lastly, we would go to this third one. And as you note, the angle bisectors all meet, they're all concurrent, at a point inside the triangle. And this point inside the triangle is called the in-center. And the in-center actually kind of is what it sounds like. If you were to take the distance from this in center to every side, of course, here's a perpendicular line to this side, and then if you were to draw a perpendicular line to this side, and then a perpendicular line to this side, you would have three congruent segments. And then, of course, when you have three congruent segments, that's kind of a tip off that they could be radii of a circle. So if we were to take from this this side, this side, and this side, we would discover that you could inscribe a circle where the in center is the center of that circle. And finally, we have the perpendicular bisector. Uh, this is a little bit different. Uh, as the name shows, it's a perpendicular segment that bisects each side. So the way uh, I would suggest drawing it is instead of starting at the vertex, start at each side. So for example, let's start at the base of this triangle and we'll start at the midpoint because that's what bisects it. And we'll just simply draw a perpendicular line straight up. So this is perpendicular and this is a bisector. Okay, and again, I'll turn it over for a little bit easier way to draw this. And again, we start at the midpoint, bisect it, and draw a line perpendicular, straight up, like that. And of course, these are congruent. And then finally, we'll draw the third one. And we start at the midpoint of this side, and we'll draw a perpendicular line straight up. And these two segments are congruent. And of course, as again, like the other ones, we have a point of concurrency. And in this case, this is called the circumcenter. And the cool thing about the circumcenter is it, the center is actually the center of a circle that could circumscribe this triangle. So the way we figure that out is we take this center point, and we, if we were to draw a segment directly to the vertex, the vertex, and the other vertex, we would discover through geometry proofs that these three segments are congruent. And of course, if you have three segments that are congruent at the same center point, they could form a circle. So let's see if we can do this with the compass this time. I'm gonna see if my estimates were good enough. We take the center point and we take the distance to each vertex and I'm gonna have to ballpark this. And if we were to draw this, get a better measurement, 
two, three, make sure. Okay, here we go. We have our center point, and I figured out the radius with this compass. And there you go. Hopefully you can see that. We have a circle that is circumscribed where the radii join each vertex to the circumcenter. Okay, a quick summary of the four uh, characteristics of a triangle and how they behave. Uh, let's just compare them all. First, I started with the altitude. You start at the vertex. You draw a perpendicular line straight to the opposite side. A perpendicular bisector is you start at the middle of the side and draw a perpendicular line straight up. So if you notice, these are parallel lines, but they're not necessarily the same. Uh, also, what you'll notice is that this perpendicular bisector creates two congruent segments. And this is also the same point where the median, which starts at the vertex and goes to the midpoint of the opposite side, ends up. So altitude, median, perpendicular bisector, and then lastly, we have the angle bisector, which is simply take any vertex and just simply bisect the angle in this manner. And that would be a angle bisector. Anyway, to practice or learn more, uh, visit the Math Plane site. There are some exercises and links to other resources, or check out some other videos. And I uh, hope this helped. Thanks for visiting.